Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. My wonderful co-host Maureen isn't here today. Maureen loves to travel and she'll be traveling for the next couple weeks. So that means you're stuck with me today. So let me get you caught up on some of the news stories that have made headlines recently. On March 12th, NASA announced findings from the Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity that suggested Mars was once habitable. NASA officials determined this by reviewing data from Curiosity's Sample Analysis at Mars, or SAM instrument, that analyzed samples of Martian rock drilled by Curiosity. Explaining the results, SAM principal investigator Paul Mahaffey stated, The range of chemical ingredients we have identified in the sample is impressive, and it suggests pairings such as sulfates and sulfides that indicate a possible chemical energy source for microorganisms. But as LiveScience.com recently asked, would anyone care if microorganisms were found on Mars? Although discovering microorganisms on Mars or anywhere else in the galaxy would be a major discovery for scientists, its significance to the general public would likely be negligible. NASA astrobiologist Chris McKay told Live Science, people don't get excited about microorganisms. It is possible that any life discovered on Mars and life on Earth originated from the same source. Discovering microorganisms on Mars would certainly be interesting, but according to McKay, it would not be as profound as finding that there's life on Mars and finding that it represents a second genesis. Life Science explains life evolving twice in the same solar system would suggest that life is common throughout the universe, and it would give biologists an entirely new type of biology to study. Discovering a second genesis would profoundly affect religions around the world. Or would it? A panel discussion on this topic took place on June 24, 2012 at the SETI Institute's SETICON 2 conference in Santa Clara, California. This panel, titled Would Discovering E.T. Destroy Earth's Religions?, concluded that the resulting impact on religion from such an alien discovery is probably not going to be as severe as we might initially think. In addition to this panel discussion on the topic of extraterrestrial impact on religion, an ETI crisis survey was conducted in 2008 by Dr. Ted Peters, professor of systematic theology at both Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary and the Center for Theology and the Natural Sciences at the Graduate Theological Union, Berkeley, California, to test the belief that, upon confirmation of contact between Earth and an extraterrestrial civilization of intelligent beings, the long-established religious traditions of Earth would confront a crisis of belief and perhaps even collapse. As Life Science explains, the survey polled more than 1,300 religious individuals and found that believers were extremely confident that the discovery of intelligent aliens wouldn't shake their faith. In other news, nearly 20% of Britons believe extraterrestrials had visited Earth in UFOs, according to a new poll. As LondonLovesBusiness.com explains, the question about aliens was posed in an extensive poll commissioned by the Taxpayers Alliance, Britain's independent grassroots campaign for lower taxes. So what do taxes have to do with extraterrestrials? Mm, nothing. But the response to the alien question was used to show that more Britons believe Earth has been visited by extraterrestrials than think the taxes are too low. The poll question specifically asked if voters thought that alien life forms have visited the Earth and UFOs. 19% of respondents believe this to be true, where 61% do not. 20% indicated that they were unsure. Another survey question asked if voters believe there is other intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. 64% of the respondents indicated that they believe this is true. Only 16% do not believe this, while 21% were unsure. Well, the National Atomic Testing Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada, opened its Area 51 Myth or Reality exhibit in March of 2012. With this exhibit featuring UFO extraterrestrial elements, the museum hosted special lectures in 2012 related to these topics, including one that featured former military personnel discussing UFOs. The museum has announced its first lectures of 2013, and just like last year, many of these presentations are UFO related. On April 5th, T.L. Keller is presenting a lecture titled The Antelope Valley Area 51 Connection. Keller is an aerospace engineer and former computer systems analyst for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. In 2010, Keller authored the book The Total Novices Guide to UFOs and was a presenter at the 2012 MUFON Symposium in Kentucky. Dave McDonald, the executive director of MUFON, is presenting a lecture at the museum on April 13th titled Hunting UFOs. And on May 11th, Dr. Lynn Katai will present a lecture about the mysterious 1997 UFO event known as the Phoenix Lights. Other UFO-related events are scheduled for later this year, but have yet to be publicly announced. If you're interested in upcoming events at the National Atomic Testing Museum, visit their website and sign up for their newsletter. Well, strange arching contrails appeared in the sky above northeast Lincolnshire, a county in eastern England, on the morning of Thursday, March 14th. And some assert these were created by UFOs. The Grimsby Telegraph reported these contrails, complete with photo and video, on March 14th. 
The Grimsby Telegraph posted a follow-up article on March 15th claiming that the paper's newsroom was flooded with calls about the unusual display. Circular contrails are not unheard of, especially in the Lincolnshire area of England. The military base RAF Waddington is located approximately 40 miles southwest of where these contrails were spotted, and according to the RAF website, it is from that base that the RAF operates seven E-3D Sentry aircraft in the Airborne Surveillance and Command and Control role. These planes routinely circle the skies conducting surveillance, and therefore they occasionally leave interesting circular contrails behind. The U.S. Air Force also operates E-3 Sentry aircraft in the area, but according to the Grimsby Telegraph, both the RAF and the U.S. Air Force say contrails were not caused by their planes. The Grimsby Telegraph's picture editor, John Corkin, recorded video of the contrails, and he also posted the following message to his Twitter account. This was UFOs. I saw them. Hashtag Area 51. With the military denying involvement, and with the brief yet confident witness testimony of seeing UFOs, some wonder if UFOs, terrestrial or otherwise, were in fact responsible for these circular contrails. And to me, the circular contrails story is an interesting one, not only because we have a witness who claims to have observed UFOs, who knows what that means, but then we have the military denying involvement with those contrails as well. But I will point out that if the military exercises in that area are related to surveillance, it's not too far of a stretch to assume that they might be less than forthcoming with admitting that they were conducting surveillance in that area. So that's interesting. But I want to talk for a minute about the National Atomic Testing Museum and their upcoming lectures. I'm a big fan of the museum and I think they're doing great things there with the lectures they have. And in addition to the lectures coming up that I mentioned, they do have lined up presentations by, let's see, a joint presentation by Ben McGee and Ben Hansen. That's going to happen in October. Watch their website for the date on that. And then Lee Spiegel from the Huffington Post will also be delivering a presentation there. And I believe that will happen in December. And all of the lectures that happen at the Atomic Testing Museum, uh, the museum puts them up for sale, the DVDs for sale that you can buy from their website. So if you want to check that out, go to nationalatomictestingmuseum.org. That's where you can find the DVDs. That's where you can find all the information about their upcoming lectures. Well, that's all for this episode of Spacing Out. Until next week's episode, openminds.tv is where you can go to find all the latest UFO news. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave your comments below the video. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason McClellan, and I'll see you in the future.